And here's Rob Tussin. He was very impressive in the warm-up. Oh! Oh! oh, God, he's still going. Oh, how can he? Oh, he must be feeling really stupid. I don't think he's feeling anything from the neck down, Ken. Yes, hello racing gamers and welcome back to Bomber Sports Play's NASCAR Heat Evolution. I'm sorry about the little bit of a delay for this. Uh, this episode has been recorded. Uh, life's been getting in the way again as it has a habit of doing. And this episode's kind of not a conventional one because the race kind of got screwed over halfway through. And I may have spoiled that in the intro. But anyway, we'll deal with that later. For now, let's go back to a happier time when the race was just starting. And we've qualified 15th, so not too bad. I was really not expecting a good performance here. I'm not very good at Charlotte Motor Speedway in this game at all. I'm not very good at the cookie cutters that are like high banked and quite tight. You saw how miserable things were at Texas, and eventually things turn out kind of the same way here. But anyway, for now, in these happier times, I'm up to 13. Not a bad start. Austin Dillon is powering through on the high side in the Cheerios car. It's been nice to see uh, NASCAR Heat Evolution and DMI releasing more paint schemes as free DLC. That's quite nice. I didn't like the idea of having paint schemes and just paint schemes as like paid DLC, especially for $10 when entire car packs on Forza were 15. Oh, that's not good. Well, we completely wrecked Greg Biffle and Kyle Busch and everything else. And that's a caution. I'm just going to leave that there because you think, yeah, that's supposed to be a caution. Guy was spinning through the grass. Guy's wrecked. Yeah. That's not foreshadowing. I don't know what is, motherfucker. Anyway, so we're only two laps in. Uh, we are actually going to pit here. Now, this is going to seem like a bit of a weird thing. A weird strategy. Because the pit strategy for this one should be four stops. Although, it being a hundred lap race, the fuel never seemed to show as more than 19 laps at a time. So... There's the chance of like a late like splash and dash kind of thing. So if we pit now, maybe we take one of that that fifth extra stop now. And I'm actually just going to fade to the back. There you go, Michael McDowell. Oh, <laughs> and look who I found here. I can't get away from him. We just can't get away from each other. El Generico versus Kevin Smith. No, wait. <laughs> I mean, Regan Owens. That's that's not an actor. Uh, well, we've been chill the last few. Yeah, I see you there. I see you. Yeah, see you later. Brad, I mean, Brad, we need an intervention, mate. What is your season? What is your season right now? I mean, I'm prepared to accept that maybe you pitted along with the rest of us. Whoops. I'm nearly causing another wreck. Uh, is it really a good idea to go three wide? Well, Greg Biffle's going three wide, so we're going to go three wide too. <laughs> we squeeze up. I don't like going on the outside in the trioval at these sort of tracks where there's like a defined, like, almost hard corner to the cookie cutter. Like, there's almost an angle to it. It's hard to tell where the inside line cars are going to stay and how much they're going to move out through the trioval. And I always misjudge it. Hello, we are blasting around the... Oh, a little bit of contact right Ellis there. And we... Uh, this is an interesting thing because we've got quite a lot of fast cars bogged down back in the pack with us. And then there's Brian Scott, who may not be the most blisteringly mediocre driver ever because he finished second at Talladega this past weekend. Fair play. Yeah. Well done. Well done, Brian Scott. Well done. You're still blistering non-entity for now. Oh, Tony, what was up with that? Actually, he was getting crowded by his own teammate. And Brian, look at Brian Scott. He is a man on a mission. He's like, I've got second. I'm determined to prove my worth in this series. I am not just a sponsor. Oh, Tony, what are you doing, mate? Tony, what's the aggro about? Are you just like myth that you're not going to make the chase in your final season? Well, you did make the chase and then you were eliminated in the first round. And you're just totally irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah, have some of that, motherfucker. Anyway. I'm quite happy to chill at the back here for a lot. I mean, this is a long race. This will be probably the longest race of the season. A um, 100 laps, it's probably the longest. I mean, at what, like 25? Yeah, 25% 25 distance. This would still be 150 miles, which is about... Yeah, that should work out as the longest race of the year, given it's the longest race of the year at full speed. Uh, full distance, I mean. Like, Daytona was 125 miles... Ryan, you're being mediocre again. Actually, no, it's not you that's being mediocre. I think it's Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman just stopped. He's pitting. Ryan Newman's pitting. Everyone has checked out. That was bizarre. That was very strange. I have no idea what... Oops. <laughs> no idea what happened there. And I've nearly just dropped a pen in my mug of tea. I'm just going to put down everything. That's Casey Mears in the Geico car. And one of the military cars. Nice. Again, one of the pa uh, cars that came through in the free DLC recently. 
Haven't been able to get the NASCAR Next drivers yet, which is a bit annoying because I really want to play. I'm stoked at the fact that a Euro NASCAR is in this game. If any of you have driven Alon Day's car, that's a Euro NASCAR. That's a NASCAR wheel and Euro Series car. That's my series, bitches. That's the series that races at my home track, Brands Hatch. <laughs> And the series that also meant I was—I ended up getting a chance to interview Steve O'Donnell last year and getting an exclusive on the, the Aero package, which was definitely a career highlight in terms of motorsport journalism for me. But uh, Eric jo Eric Jones is in twentieth, guys. Can we just can we just like has uh, has anyone got a hot light? Hang on a minute. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ring. Uh, yeah. Um, is that the um, hell hotline? Uh, is it is it snowing where you are? It isn't. It isn't. Okay, well, I just wanted to confirm that because Eric Jones is running uh, 19th right now in my race. <laughs> yeah, I know it's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, okay, well, you have a good day. Bye bye, -bye now. Bye bye. Yeah, so I just rang hell. Apparently, it's not uh, snowing down there, so. <laughs> Eric Jones, you keep doing what you're doing, which is now being mediocre. Matt D. X Matty D. Hey, it's X Matty D running. I've got to say, that 83, the patriotic 83 scheme, does look good. Oh, yeah, look at that. It looks great. I need to get me a, a, a De Benedetto diecast. I am planning some stop motions, but I'm not giving like a time frame on any of them. Any of you who follow me on my main channel and want to are always like, oh, when are you going to do more stop motions? Basically, they are the most time consuming thing ever. I am planning on doing more of them. I'm not putting a time frame on any of them because then I'll be like, oh, no, I've got to, ah, and then inevitably I'll disappoint someone. So, but they are in the works. The tracks are still there. Scripts are in place. It's all, you know, it will happen. And I think I do need an XMAD diecast for that race. It needs to happen. I'm not going to have him win. That'd be ridiculous. Actually, Dave Blaney did win one of my stop motion races. The most viewed one on my channel is the one that Dave Blaney won. <laughs> That's it. Well, there you go. Yeah. Matt DiBenedetto is going to win my next stop motion, guys. Spoiler alert. You heard it here first. Anyway, we're now working the high side on him. Did a good little battle. We're trying to pull up behind him here and trying to make the pass. But we're on the high side here. The car's pretty good on the high side. I've got to say car is disgustingly tight out of nowhere here. Like, there's no tolerance. Turn three and four, I can't figure out a shot. It's very weird. It's like, and you can go in, and you don't have to let off enough speed, and then suddenly, at a random point in the middle of the corner, it's like, and now you're shooting into the wall. What were you doing going that fast until that exact moment? Nope. Oh, trying to work the, the right rear. Trying to take the air off the back of the bender. This is a good battle. We had some fun up at Talladega. He's, you're all right by me. You are all right. You sound like The Rock. Hey, Manny. Hey, Manny to Benedetto. You are right. You are right. If you smell what the rock is flatulating. Anyway. Oh, hello. De Benedetto's getting back here. And Casey Mears has decided to join the fun. I mean, ganged up by, on by all the Patriots. It, look, just because I couldn't afford any camo decals on my car, all right? It was either that or the airfare to get our equipment over here. So, hush you mush about how there's no American flags on this car. I mean, why would there be anyway? There's a British guy driving it. Which probably means Donald Trump hates me. Just for me existing. I like that, actually. <laughs> it's a bit like how the whole Lewis Hamilton Snapchat fiasco... Oh, Kevin Harvick's here. Oh, oh God. Ryan Blaney's tanking. Kevin Harvick's piling up behind. This is all getting a bit congested. Ryan, do you want to, like, stop being mediocre for a second? Oh, n n no, not now. Harvick and Larson are right there with us. There's quite a few really fast cars along with us. Um, who are charging up from the back of the field. So we've got to be careful here. Again, long race, so we can probably afford to race it a little bit like Mark Martin. Just let him go. Run your own race. Be peaceful, be zen. But, uh, yeah, my existence in this series annoying Donald Trump is probably the same way that, you know, the whole Lewis Hamilton... Oh, nice pass. That was a sly job, and it actually didn't work. <laughs> that was more of a dive bomb than Scott McLaughlin, and the difference is it didn't work. Because Mears is now on the inside, and he's opening the gap up to last... No, Mears! No! No! Actually, Larson's right there. Uh, I'm going to have to let him go. Actually, do you know what? I might just... Oh, no, it's still working. Oh, Mears, you know what? Would you mind not doing that, Plus, We are working back here. If we can get a draft off the Bonte, we might be able to protect the position. Or McMurray will just run interference for us. Oh, yeah, he might do that, actually. But now that relies on me clearing McMurray, which is... Which is... Which is... Going to happen. Hey! I actually profited out of all that. Although Larson is just like, I will not be stopped. You can throw as much lap... Oh, Bobby, can you not? Can you not? I've got Carl Larson trying to get in my boot here. Still there. Plus. Bobby, can you stop being, like, above average? It's weird. I don't like... I'm not comfortable with this. Still there. Oh! He's still there! Bob! 
That's when you know I'm annoyed at Bobby Labonte. Just, I just call him Bob. Bob! Oh, God! Whoa! That was a bit close. Larson went to the inside while I was still on the outside of Labonte. And Labonte was like, I want no part in this. I'm just bailing the fuck out of that. This is only 19 laps in, so... Blimey. A long way to go in this one. In more ways than one. Anyway, Larson's passed us now, as he's been threatening to do for about five laps now. Uh, Kevin Harvick's pretty close behind. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to finally finish my story. My presence in this series annoying Donald Trump is a bit like how uh, Lewis Hamilton's Snapchat thing, you, you see all them shenanigans over in F1, like, where the biggest story was a man uses... It was like a Top Gear intro. Tonight, a man goes on Snapchat. Uh, and everyone was criticizing him, everyone was going mad, and, and everyone was like, oh, yeah. And I was kind of like, eh, Lewis Hamilton's probably being a bit of a dick. And then Katie Hopkins, who's basically a female version of Donald Trump who writes for one of our national newspapers. Uh, Kevin, you may as well go. I'm just being mediocre here, so you go. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Katie Hopkins is basically a female Donald Trump over here. She's like a female Piers Morgan, but worse, if that's possible. Literally, if Ebola was in human form, it would be Katie Hopkins. And she went on this massive rant about Lewis Hamilton, blah, and this stuff. And I was just like, oh, actually, Lewis Hamilton, keep Snapchatting all you like. <laughs> You're annoying the right people. Get, go for it, mate. Anyway, speaking of which... Um, speaking of annoying people, I don't know what link that is. Uh, we are actually up to third as pit stops have begun. So right now, you can probably tell, based on who's in front of us, <laughs> um, exactly who pitted for fuel under the first caution. That'll be us. So we've still got a few more laps to go on this stint. And we're going to push it as far as we can, obviously. There's no point doing anything else. And Harvick's actually slowing here. I wonder if he's pitting. He is not. He's just being mediocre for some reason. I'm not sure why. I, I have no problems with this. Um, we're up to 22 laps. Thank you very much, Bob. I mean, Bobby. Um, he just prayed. He, he just said, "Great lap, buddy." Thank you. No oh, cheers. I, I encourage. I, I encourage the uh, the cheerleading. There's a lot of cars rejoining now. We're on lap 22. Based on the where we pitted, I think we restarted around like four or five. So maybe up to like 24, 25, maybe. Let's find out. Basically, I'm just going to run it, run it until it's dry. Harvick's pitting, and so is Larson. So they're on the same strategy as me. And I'm leading! hey -oh. Leading this race, mofos! I think that's quite good because... I don't know if... I think one of my associate sponsors was either qualify in the top 20 or lead a lap. Um, I, it may have been the qualify one, but if it was a lead a lap one, then yay! We, we, we just did that. Well, we, we will do that this time around. Um, because we will lead this lap. We're not pitting this time. We've still got two laps to go on fuel. Um, see if we can stretch it out maybe to lap 25? I mean, we're on, what, like 22, 3 now? I've lost count. Maths are just not my strong point. But making and drinking tea is... Mmm, that's a good mug as well. I'm back on the tea this week. I remember that soup. I like soup, but no. It's too chunky and, and clunky for uh, commentary. There's your, there's your uh, tactical analysis and review of soup. Alright, we're on lap 24. What are we doing on fuel? Uh, Junior, can you not? I'm gonna try- you do realize I'm trying to pit here, mate. Junior, would you mind not- Oh my god! Right, why? What are you doing? You absolute plebs! Thank you, David Hoots, for actually throwing a caution when you're supposed to. Again, more on that later. But, <laughs> well, that was a bit chaotic. well, I guess we <laughs> What do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> if we stayed out, we'd legit lead on the restart, and then immediately run out of fuel. <laughs> So we're going to pit here. We're going to take some of the uh, right side air pressure down just to try and uh, loosen the car up a little bit. Um, but we're going to lead under caution. <clears throat> a few other guys have not pitted yet. Earnhardt Jr., Austin Dillon, they were involved in the wreck. So I, I don't know what happened. Basically, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was on the inside of me when I was trying to pit. And I'm a bit like, uh, mate, can you not? Would you, would you mind not doing that? Considering I am trying to pit now. Dillon's car still beat the fuck up. And we are restarting ninth, so that's not too bad. It's not too bad. Right, we're on the inside now. Uh, Brian, right. Brian Scott, what are you doing here? This is not where you're supposed to be. He, he, he's getting a nosebleed. This is like Tanadega all over again. I can also see Regan Smith in the mirrors. The mediocrity train up in here in the top 10. And Logano, who's actually quite good. Uh, Austin Dillon's trying to go to the inside. I'm just going to have to go to the outside because Brian Scott is just parked. He's just parked the bus in the middle of the track. Brian, can you not? Brian, can you just, just stop being a blistering non entity? It's like he sort of has talent for about 10 seconds and then runs out of it again. He has very small reserves of talent. Please don't run out of it now while I'm alongside. Thank you. So we're up to eighth. We're actually running in the top 10, you know. Another good result could be beckoning here. Maybe. 
Um, but as I say, I, I was not expected to be competitive here, but we, we really have, this team definitely has taken a step forward in recent weeks. Like, we've been more kind of on pace and slightly competitive than not in the last few weeks. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens when we go to Pocono. Basically, that's a, a power and high-speed aero track, both things that have been our most rubbish factors so far this year. So, thank you very much again, Bobby. Um, I'm going to take another sip of tea. Mm. Oh, that's, uh, that's good tea as well. You've got to be careful. If you leave the tea too long whilst you're commentating, especially at this length of time, it does go cold. So you go to sip by the end, you're like, oh, that was a great race. Sips cold tea. Because <laughs> there is nothing more gross in the world than cold tea. It wouldn't surprise me if they used it as a torture device in Guantanamo Bay. Forget waterboarding, forget everything else. Uh, right, mate, you're not cooperating. We need answers out of you. We, you. You forced us to do this, buddy. It's time to bring out the mug of Stone Cold Tea. No! No! I'll talk, I'll tell you whatever you need to know. Just not the cold tea. It's horrendous. Anyway, we're still trying to stay on strategy. Uh, we kind of won't, but pfft, I mean, this is the sort of race where there's like a million pit stops. Part of me is considering raising the wear rate a little bit so there's not quite as many pit stops. Like, none of the, like, if, it, if it's like solid one or two stop races, then that's okay, but like two, like three or four, that's just, oh, it's just a drag, but we'll see how we go. I might experiment with something later in the season, if it's that much of a drag, man. Anyway. We're kind of in our, our own world here. Well, I'm in my own world most of the time, anyway. Uh, just mumbling away to myself. Everything's happy in this world. There's infinite tea in this world. Yeah, you can kind of tell that there's not really much going on at the moment. Oh, someone's coming to join us. I think that's Casey Kane, is it? Someone who's looks significantly faster than us. This is not realistic. Casey Kane actually being very fast in 2016 and not being mediocre. So we're just going to let you go. In any case, I've got... You, just, you go, mate. If, you, if you're enjoying being fast, I'm enjoying being relatively... This is relatively competitive for me. This is relatively competitive for you. So just go on your way. I'm being very zen today. Very peaceful. Very relaxed. There is no need for stress. And that'll be the case throughout the video. And it's kind of in the... I, I still can't figure out turn three and four here. It's very weird. Also a little bit disappointing. There's no, like, day to night dynamic. In terms of the light. It's just a, a night race all the way. Uh, they do have a day Charlotte option, um, so I don't know if there was any way they could just do a fade in. <laughs> just, like, just a random point, it's just like they turn the lights off, like, oh, it's night now. <laughs> Good night, we've turned, the, we've turned all the lights off. Excuse me. So, we're just over one third distance through. And boy, is it starting to be a bit of a slog. As I say, well, at least Martin Tricks Jr. isn't laying a beat down on this field. His performance in the 600 this year, oh my god, that was dominant as, as anything. Like, I remember, like, giving up with about 100 laps to go. Like, I was determined to stick with it, because the very next day, my favourite football team, AFC Wimbledon, were at Wembley for a playoff final, which they ended up winning, which was super cool. So, I was like, well, I can't be up too late, because I'm going to be knackered for that. But I stayed up, and I was like, no, I'm going to watch. I'm going to try and make it through the motorsport hat trick, because I'd watched the Monaco Grand Prix. And I watched the Indy 500, actually, which was hilarious, because we did a live stream. As part of the Motorsport 101 podcast, we did a live stream called The Day of Classics that me and Ryan King hosted. And we had Chris Cook of uh, Cook Productions 1 in oh, both the streams. And we had a bunch of other guys, a bunch of other cool guys in what we're calling the Alt F1 community, as in the F1 community that isn't based around the latest F1 game and Drive to the Tires Explode challenges and YouTube championships and stuff like that, which is really good fun, but we're just not in that. So we do like race reviews and podcasts and we're all snarky and a bit hipster, which is fun. Um, but uh, we did this big live stream for the Day of Classics. We live streamed our commentary of the Monaco GP and the Indy 500. And Cook Productions won with about 30 laps to go in the Indy 500. was like, oh, Alex Rossi's never going to win. He's shit. And he tweeted that to a friend of mine, Sarah Connors. You need to follow her on Twitter. Her and Elizabeth Worth are two of the sassiest motherfuckers on Twitter. It's wonderful. Well, Elizabeth Worth actually got Sebastian Vettel to sign a blue flag this weekend at Cota. Wonderful. Um, so she tweeted Connors, who was at the race... Cook, uh, Chris Cook tweeted Connors to say that Rossi was shit, knowing that Connors loves Rossi like a child. So Connors then blocked him in rage, and then we all know what happened at the finish, and it led to a beautiful moment once we, we all just lost our shit at the finish of the 500, as Larson's actually turned up to listen to this story as well. You should listen to the story, mate. It's hilarious. Also, I'm totally going to let you go because you're a lot faster. Um, and... Yeah, everyone was blowing up at the end, and then there was a pause, and then King just metaphorically looked at Chris and was like, Well, Chris, you look stupid now! And it was just the most magical moment. 
But yeah, I remember sitting around to the end, like everyone else had gone to bed, like everyone in Britain had gone to bed by that point. I think King stayed up to watch the Coke 600 with me. And I was watching that and I was like, wow. Wow, this is one of those races where you're like, this is so dominant, you kind of have to just sort of applaud Truex Jr. for the absolute beatdown. I like the fact that he's now the latest person to expose the massive flaws with the current chase system, as in a guy with four wins, wins in two of the biggest races in the entire season, and one of the dominant guys all year is out because of something that he had no control over at Talladega. GG, good stuff. Which I find funny because people are like, oh, well, you know, people can go like 16-0 and and unbeaten in the NFL or the NBA regular season, then they'll lose in the playoffs, and that's not fair. I'm like, yeah, but that's at least their fault for not showing up on the day or for the other team being better on the day. That's, it's not like you run out onto the pitch for an, M an NFL playoff and then your entire like offensive line team just have their knees explode and like none of them can run or throw a football and they have to immediately forfeit the match and the other team just wins by default. They didn't even have to do anything. That doesn't happen in other sport, but then again, there's a lot of things that the chase does that don't happen in other sport. Anyway, um, yeah, but Truex is, I mean, the way he won that and then he won the Southern 500, those are both really, really good drives. But uh, we're actually keeping up with Larson here, similar to how we were with Harvick in the first stint. Our next pit stop's not going to be far away. We're barely going to make it to 50 laps, which is annoying. Because uh, we're probably still going to have to stop another four times. Or, no, three. Another three times. Oh, God, why? Oh. Anyway. Tame Larson. My guy's on pit road. It looks like Denny Hamlin. This is going to turn out, I think, a bit like the Southern 500. It's going to be a slog for the first bit. And then it's really going to kick off near the end, hopefully. Um... Like, I find it funny, another one of the stories coming out of Talladega was, oh, well, the Joe Gibbs car blatantly just sandbagged at the back. Oh, they should be penalized for, yeah, they should be going flat out. Why? They're guaranteed into the next round on points if they don't crash. It's Talladega, where, which is famous for um, really big crashes. It's also famous for, at the moment, uh, being really tough to pass the leader without uh, causing a massive crash. The chase rewards them getting through to the next round by just having points by... Um, let me think about that. Not crashing. Why are you? Why is anyone surprised by this? Like, it makes sense. Like, Joe Gibbs must have been just... Coach Gibbs must have been just sat there like, guys, just chilling 32nd all day. You don't need to do anything else. Like, it's fine, you know? So, I totally get where they're coming from. And it's still not as bad as Kevin Harvick going, oh no, my engine's blown up. Oh dear, I'm just going to try and get out. Oh dear, I've just wrecked Trevor Bain and the entire field's crashed. And they've thrown a caution at just the point where I'm still in a position to get into the next round on points. What a coincidence. It's not quite as bad as that. But anyway, we are up to fifth place. Wow, this video has featured a lot of chase ranting. And will feature a lot of ranting in general. Again, not getting ahead of myself. And we've got four laps to the next pit stop. Um, which will come in about lap 48 or so. Uh, and then, oh god, just millions of pit stops. I've, I've lost count in the amount of pit stops we're still going to need to do. But hopefully we can lead a few more laps here. Some people coming in now. We're up to fourth, second. Are we going to lead this lap? No. We are going to be out here for a few more laps yet, so we've got a chance to lead a couple more laps. We'll have the bonus point for that, at least. Bonus point? Is it a point now? I'm still... Oh, caution's... Got... Again, a caution's come out at the exact time we... <laughs> Do people just not trust me? Does David Hoots just not trust me to get onto pit road cleanly? Well, considering what happened the first time around, yes, I can completely understand that. So, yeah, we are pitting this time. I mean, again, that's kind of a no-brainer. Everyone's pitting in the top 10 as well. Wow, if the position stays as they are, look at this for a top 10. That's going to be a bit cray. Look at this. Austin Dillon leading again, the, 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 the fuel strategy king. Brian Scott third, Regan Smith fourth, Eric Jones fifth, Ryan Blaney sixth. And it doesn't stay that way. Michael McDowell is fourth. What the absolute F is this? And there's a big gap up the middle. Do I go for it? Do I go for it? We're seventh place. We've got a good restart. There's no... Re oh, we're going for it. We're going for it. I immediately regret my decision. I immediately regret my decision. Oh, my... Oh, scenes. We crashed. And we've, hit, we've blown the engine on bugger. Never mind. Hopefully, if they throw the caution, we'll be able to get back to the pits and repair it and not lose. They're not... You're not going to throw the caution? Even after McDowell spun again? Absolute piece of
of shit, David Hoogs. I don't give a shit. I'm gonna, you're gonna throw a caution now. I'm deliberately parked in the middle of the pissing track. Gregor Smith, get fucked. Get wrecked. I've now been wrecked again. You're gonna throw a caution for that. No, you're not, because you're a blind dickhead tosspot fat piece of... Oh, I don't even care. I don't even know. Michael McDowell, piss off. You, stop laughing at me in the stands. You're a dick. You're a dick. You're especially a dick, you fat piece of smelly old... <laughs> Okay. I am calm. <sighs> I am I am calm. I am calm. Except for the fact that for the second time, no wait, the third time in this series, a caution, or lack thereof, has completely ruined my race. Absolutely completely ruined my sodding race. And now on a serious note, like, I'm getting fed up with this. I like this game a lot, but this is threatening to break career mode for me. And I know that DMR are apparently addressing this in the next patch. And I know it's hard to get caution predictions right, but seriously, how that wasn't a caution when my engine was blown, there were cars scattered all over the place in the middle of the pack, and we've, our race is gone. Our race is dead. We've basically just wasted half an hour or however long I spent racing we're now going to be five, six, maybe ten laps down. And now we're going to suffer all the pointless rubber banding that's still not going to get us onto the lead lap. So, I mean, basically the race is over for us. So what we're going to do now is play a game of, is that a caution? Here we go. I'm back out on the track. Carl Edwards has had an even worse race than me. Spun him in the tri -oval. There he goes. What do you think? Is that a caution? Is that a caution? <coughs> no, no. Of course. Spinning car. Now, to contrast, we have, we're going down the back straight on our own. No cars in sight. Is this a caution? There it is! There's a caution. Now, we're trying to wreck Tony Stewart. We have actually wrecked off ourselves. And we're spinning around, there's loads of cars piling in. This a caution? Carlo. Hey! Got that one right. Got that one fucking right, only because half the pissing field wrecked into it. And here we go again. We've just- Oh, we've just ploughed Casey Kane, who's doing about 12 miles an hour because he's rubber banding. Is that a caution? Well, actually, he did save it, so maybe you could say that shouldn't have been a caution. Anyway, here we go. They're going three wide, still doing 12 miles an hour. Plowed AJ Olmendinger in the trial. We're in the grass. We've come across. We've wrecked Olmendinger. Spun round. This has got to be a caution. I mean, there's cars scattering everywhere. By God, what do you think? <coughs> nope, not a caution in sight. Silly me. And some more carnage. We've just whacked the wall. We're actually upside down. We are actually upside down. <coughs> yeah, that was a caution, I guess. In the end of the race now, on the final restart, we've met our old nemesis, Chris Buescher, and he's- Oh god, he's just gone. He's absolutely gone. There's cars spinning everywhere. There's smoke everywhere. Is that a caution? <coughs> no, of course not. How can I be so silly? And this is just me plowing him on the final lap, to be honest with you. This is me just fucking around now. I mean, oh man. And that was finally the end of the race. I had to do like another half an hour's worth of racing, which was utterly pointless given I was just out of the race by that stage. But you can see, like, just, if you're going to have a system where there's no, like, rewind button, like Forza, where you can't go back and, like, not crash, I didn't even say the results. I didn't even get any photos in this race. I was just so, oh, God. Like, on a serious point, I know I made a joke about it, but DMR, you really need to fix that. Especially if you're going long distance in races, you really, really have to fix that. I mean, and I hope you do in the next patch. Like... I talked about the rubber banding being a big issue in Korea. This one's probably a bigger one because that just ruined the race for us. Like, there was no point completing the race. But we had to complete the race to move on. Like, there was no way I could quit or, like, just go in the pits and DNF. I had to finish the race. So there I was just scooting around for another half an hour, trying not to crash into cars doing 12 miles an hour because they're all rubber banding, all because a lack of caution had completely screwed me race. So, please, DMR, I like your game. I like you. Please, 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 please fix that. Please. And for all of you who watched this episode, thank you all so much. I'm sorry for the delays, and hopefully normal service will be resumed at Pocono. I'm going to finish my tea. In the meantime, you should totally subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Comment down below, like, and everything else. And I'll see you guys next time on Bomber Sports Plays. Well, you can keep